Go ahead. Whoa! What's up, science team? Not too long ago, I was on YouTube and I was watching a video about black fire from the YouTube channel, The Action Lab. And I thought it was so cool that I decided to watch another video about the same subject from the YouTube channel, The Royal Institute. And I kept thinking to myself, this is amazing. Immediately after watching these videos, I started thinking, how can we do this experiment but make it way cooler? Then I thought about the time that we shot neon green and pink flames across my entire driveway with a build that we got from the King of Random. It was this little mini fire extinguisher that was converted into a flamethrower. Then boom, a light bulb goes off in my head. But in our case, a low pressure sodium bulb because today we're gonna be making a black fire flamethrower. Now in order to make this work, we had to order a few specialty items. We got this on Amazon and a bunch of different pieces and had to rig it all together to make it work. There was actually a photo of this exact same setup online by user 63400, who then got roasted by this other guy, Harper, telling him not to buy random things online. So I guess in a way, this video is kind of for you, user 63400. These items actually do work. Uh, um, they do make the light bulb turn on, but you gotta kind of finagle everything. This is the bulb, which has this funny bottom called a bayonet base, which needs this thing called a bayonet base lamp holder. Then we need this thing to make sure the bulb doesn't burn out super fast. This is called a ballast and it regulates the electric current to make sure the bulb has enough electricity to fire up and then minimize the electrical current to sustain light without the bulb overheating. Truthfully, we didn't know how to set this up either, but the Nikopedia team just joined a makerspace called Hex Labs, and one of the members makes these super awesome custom lamps. His name is Shannon, and he has this company called 51st, and they make these really awesome, cool, like, hipster lamp sets. Um, there's actually a link in the description below to his Etsy. I really want you guys to check it out. Uh, he took one look <laughs> at all of our parts, and he wired it all together, and literally the first try, he got the bulb up and running. Okay, when you turn on a low pressure sodium light, the neon gas inside the bulb begins to glow first. Uh, it's just like pinkish reddish color. Then as the temperature increases in the bulb, these little tiny bits of sodium begin to vaporize. Uh, this is actually the same sodium that we used for exploding our play button. So once it begins vaporizing, it gives off this glow of light that's close to monochromatic yellow. Really, it's two wavelengths of light. Uh, it's 589 and 589.6 nanometers, um, but our eyes really can't tell the difference. So when you turn this light on, it kind of makes everything look like this, you know, weird horror film glow, you know, gray, black, monochromatic look. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're going to take some regular old table salt. I just blended this, this is just regular table salt, which is sodium chloride. And we're gonna mix that with methanol and it should uh, give us a really cool, interesting color flame. So let's see what it does. All right, now the reason that we're seeing this really cool orange fire uh, is that when sodium is heated up, uh, the electrons jump up in the energy level. And when they come back down, they release a wavelength of light uh, or they release a photon. And that is seen as a wavelength of light, a very specific wavelength of light. And that is 589 and 589.6. Okay, so this flame, uh, which is heating up sodium is kind of like the really basic version of the low pressure sodium bulb. And if we flood this flame with the same wavelength of light from the low pressure sodium bulb, something really cool should happen. Oh yeah. You know, the reason that we're getting this totally wacky witchcraft looking flame is that sodium atoms not only give off a specific wavelength of light, but they also absorb it too. So while we're flooding the fire with light at 589 and 589.6 nanometers from the lamp, the fire is actually absorbing that light, making it look black. <laughs> I 
guess orange is the new black. Okay, let's make a flamethrower. Now with all these different black fire demos, I, I started thinking, would the same principles apply but on a grander scale? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this, uh, this is just table salt, sodium chloride, and we're gonna mix it with this right here, methanol. We're gonna take that solution and we're gonna put it inside of this mini flamethrower. This is the king of random mini flamethrower. And we're gonna add some pressurized air with a bike pump. Uh, and then what should happen is when I pull on this little lever right here, um, it should shoot our solution out this way across this, and this will be lit, this will be a little flame, and that should light our solution up. And we should see that really nice orangish glow um, from the sodium that is getting heated up. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna line the driveway with three of these low pressure sodium bulbs, which will also be giving off the wavelength of light 589 and 589.6. Um, and then what should happen is, is our flame should then absorb that light and turn black. And it should leave us with a giant streak of a black uh, flame all across the driveway. Now in order to see the flame better, we're gonna line the driveway with white paper. And for safety, we're going to shoot the flamethrower at a wall that we build at the end of the driveway. But I have no idea if this is gonna work at all. So let's give it a shot. Gross. Oh, oh. I was gonna do like that. Okay. <laughs> Danger. So there's at least one setup. Now we need to do the wiring. They're all thrice. No need to be pretty, just needs to be functional. Bulbs in, and we're good. Definitely very mad science-y. <laughs> Let's give it a shot. Um, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to conserve all of that light as possible. So we have these bounces, this wall is white, and we, we're, we're seeing some good results. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this methanol here. I'm just gonna draw a line from the wall across. Even better. Oh yeah, it's so much better. This is our table salt. Stir that bad boy up. Okay, just like a little bit of Go ahead. <laughs> Here we go, one more time. Whoa! <laughs> 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 the power! All right, so here's what we're noticing. The flamethrower works really well. You can see black right around the edges, um, and also towards the end of the cycle of the flamethrower when there's a little more air, we're starting to see a little bit more of that black flame. So what we're gonna do is we're going to cut, actually, some of our methanol with salty water. Okay. How can I do? Let's, uh, let's give it a go.
there we go. It was so crazy to see this like black flame kind of crawling up the driveway and up this wall and it's sort of just kind of like, you know, spiraling all over the place. It, it honestly, it doesn't look real, but it is real. We have not edited the video at all. Um, we also saw this really dark flame around the stream of fire that was shooting out of the mini flamethrower. Now we suspect that um, the entire flame wasn't black because the wattage of our low pressure sodium bulbs wasn't high enough to deliver that very specific wavelength of light, that 589 and 589.6. Um, we learned one, that there is black fire, two, how to make black fire, and three, all about these low pressure sodium bulbs, which are just super cool. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you really soon.